Okay, so here we want to do statistics, uh, and of course we want to use NumPy. So we import NumPy as np there. Then of course you can have, for example, information on your spreadsheet. Okay. Now the thing about uh, NumPy is that NumPy only stores one type of data. So let's say these are the this this is the information you have on a spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, this is the first whatever your spreadsheet. This is the first row of information. This is the second row. This is your third row. This is your fourth row of information. This is your fifth row. And this is your sixth row. So you've got basically six rows of information stored on your in your Excel like that. So you get the information, then you store it as an array like this. Okay. So you print out your array. So this information is stored like that. Then of course the type is an array, and of course the data type are integers. So you can add all these numbers. You want to maybe you want to find the sum of all these numbers. Yeah. When you add all these numbers one after the other what do you get so you can always find that sum by using the sum function so here uh, you can say np dot sum then you give it the array whose numbers you want to add everywhere so when you add that all those numbers in there what you get is a sum of 990. are we clear yes you can also decide to say you only want to find the sum after adding all the columns so here you want to add uh information along the first column you want to add these things along the second column so what, when you add all the numbers along the first column what is the sum when you add all the numbers along the uh, second column what's the sum when you add all the numbers along the third column what's the sum when you add all the numbers on the fourth column what's the sum you can do something like that. So the way you specify, you tell this sum function to say, you only want the numbers added according to the columns is by doing this. So you say axis equals to zero. So axis equals to zero is going to add the numbers according to the columns. So when you do this, uh, when you run it, so you're going to get this. You're going to get 150 for the first column 156 for the second column 162 for the third column 168 for the fourth column 174 for the fifth column 180 for the sixth column so when you add those numbers according to columns this is what you get of course when you add these numbers which you have here you're supposed to get your 990 there so when you if you want numbers added according to columns then you say axis equals to zero you specify this bit axis equals to zero then it's going to add numbers according to columns if on the other hand you want to add your numbers according to rows so you want to add according to the rows say first row what is the result of adding the first row how about uh the second row we want to add numbers according to rows like this third row fifth row uh, uh fourth row fifth in sixth row, so if you want to add your things according to rows, then you specify axis equals to one. So when you do that, this is what you're going to get. So the in the first row, the sum of all the numbers in the first row is 15. The sum of all the numbers in the second row is 75. The sum of all the numbers in the third row is 135. The sum of all the numbers in the fifth, uh, fourth, uh, fourth, fifth row is it? Yeah, fifth row is. 195 the sum of all the numbers in the, this one like that so basically this is what you this is what you get are we clear so you can use the sum function just to get the sum of all the numbers in your array if they're added what is it you get or you can say i want to get the sum when the numbers are added according to columns so you say axis equals to zero or you want to get the sum when the numbers are added according to the rows so you say axis equals to one are we clear? Yes. Yeah, so this is by using the the function sum. But there is also a method sum which you can use to do the same things. For example, you can say the name of the array which you want to do things. So a dot then sum here. So when you do this, a dot sum, a dot sum is going to give you 990. So it's going to just add everything 
in your in your array then you get a 919 you can also decide using some method you can say you want to add things according to the columns so it, when you add things according to the columns then you have to specify the axis so axis is going to be equal to zero so in this case you're going to get your uh first column 150 uh, second column 156 third column 162 uh fourth column 168 uh fifth column 174 sixth column 118 or you can also decide to add your numbers according to rows so in this case you're adding things according to the rows so in the case the first row is going to be 50, 15 the second row is going to be 75 the sum the third row is 135 the fifth row is uh third row the fourth row is 195 fifth row is 225 uh, 255 then the sixth row is 315 like that so basically these are the ways in which you can add additions of information in your array are we clear yes okay you can also multiply your numbers in your array if you multiply on you can say okay fine you want to multiply all the elements by each other if you do that you can do that using a method a function called prod which is short for product so you can say np.product then you put in the array whose elements you want to multiply against each other so if you do that in this case this gives you a zero the reason why it gives you a zero is because if you look at this array uh here there's a zero here so it's a zero multiplied by everything is that clear if you multiply zero by anything the end result is zero so basically the product in this case is zero but you can also decide say okay, fine uh you want the product according to the columns so in the first column you multiply the numbers in the first column in the second column you multiply the numbers in the second column like that so if you want your things according to columns then you specify this axis to be equals to zero so when you run this then you can see that in the first column where there is a zero you get a zero then these are the columns these are the values like that big big values you can also say you want to multiply your numbers in your matrix according to the rows so if you want to multiply according to rows so in this case you set your axis equals to one like that so your first row is going to be that then this like that so these are the products you're going to get okay so this is by using the function product but there's also another function called method method product so in this case you can say a dot product this is a method product so this one multiplies everything so if you multiply everything of course you're going to get a zero or you can do things according to uh, calculate your multiplication is according to the column so if you do things according to the columns so in this case a dot prod then axis equals to zero here so you're saying that the multiplication has to be done according to the column this is what you get and of course if you want your calculations done according to the rows so you say axis equals to one then this is what you get excuse me a bit So basically, 
that's the kind of thing you can do with your Looks like the presentation cut. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me share. So that's how you would uh, do your additions and also your multiplications if you needed to do that. There's also other things you can do. For example, you've got an array, then you want the maximum value in an array. Like the way we have our array, you want the maximum value and you want the minimum value. What's the smallest value? What's the largest value there is in this array? Okay, so in this case, for you to do maximum and minimum values, there is a function you can use called a minimum. A min stands for array minimum. A max stands for array maximum. So a min is for array minimum. A max is array maximum. This a min and a max are copies of those. Uh, if you still remember the built-in functions of Python, minimum and maximum. Do you still remember those? Minimum and maximum. When you're looking yeah. at built at built-in functions of Python, there was a function called minimum, and there's a function called maximum. So in this, these are basically array versions of those particular functions. So in this case, uh, for minimum values, so you'd say np dot a min then a. So this is a function. So this uh, it's an it's an array minimum. Then you give it a value the array a. Then it's going to find the minimum value in that array. You can also use a method. You can just say a dot min. So the function is a minimum. Okay. Then you put a. But there's a method called minimum where I say a dot minimum. If you say a dot minimum, it's going to give you zero also. Then there's also maximum. You can say np dot a max. So this is going to find the maximum value in a. Uh, this function that is with five then a dot max the method max a dot max is going to give you the maximum value in a which is 55. so that's how you find uh these are the ways in which you can find a maximum value and the minimum value in your array okay apart from finding the maximum and minimum value in your array you might be interested in finding out where is what is the position of this maximum value? What is the position of this minimum value in your array? Are we clear? So we know how to find the maximum value in an array. We know how to find the minimum value in an array. But you might also be interested in the position. Where is it located? What is the index? So in that case, that's where this function admin comes in. So a.admin a.admin is going to give you the index of the minimum value in A. So in this case, we know that A is the first value here. So the index is 0. The first index. So it's basically what a.admin does. It, it, it kind of uh, flattens your array. Then it looks at what is the, what's the position of the item in that particular array. Apart from using the function a.admin, you can also use an argument a.admin, this one, a.admin. So when you do this, it also do give you the same thing like that. You can also, you have what, if you're looking for the maximum value, so there's a function uh, argmax. So the function argmax, np.argmax, then you give it the array you're interested in. This is going to give you the index of the maximum, which is the 55. After the thing has been flattened, uh, you can also do the same thing here, a dot uh, argmax, like that, which gives you 35. Are we clear? So your a kind of gets flattened, then you find where it where where the the index of the the maximum and minimum is. Okay. Next comes some statistics you can do, for example, finding the mean or the average. So in this case, uh, you can use a function uh, mean. So you say np.mean. Now this one is going to add all the values in your array. Then it's going to divide them by how many they are. That's what the mean does, right? Yes. Yes. So it's going to add everything in your array A, then divide them by how many they are. 
So in this case, you can see that the mean is 27.5. So after adding everything, then you divide by how many they are, 27.5. Remember the sum was uh, 990 when you added everything. Then our array is a 6 by 6 array, which means we have got uh, 36 values. So 990, if I can do it, if I can use a calculator, 990, 990 uh, divided by 36. Yeah, you get your 27.5. So basically what this does is it adds everything. Then it divides by how many they are. Okay. But you can also decide, say, you're going to do your means according to the columns. So you want for each column, you want to add everything in the column, then you divide by how many numbers are in that particular column. So in that case, you have to specify the axis and you have to set the axis to zero so that you can do your means according to the columns. So in the first column, the average is 27, 25. In the second column, the average is 26. Uh, in the third column, the average is uh, uh, 27. In the third column, the average is 28, uh, 29, and 30. So the average of this is what gives you the 27.5. Or you can do your average according to the rows. Say in each, in each row, you want to add, then divide by how many numbers in that particular row. So in this case, you can do something like that. So when you do that, so you get your first row, the average is 2.5. In your second row, your average is 12.5. In the second, uh, third row, your average is 22.5. The fourth row, your average is 32, 32.5. The fifth row, the average is 42.5. Then the sixth row, the average is 52.5, like this. Are we clear? Yeah. So that's one way of doing things. Uh, the other way is, of course, you can uh, use a method called mean. Apart from having a function called mean, there's also a method called mean. So you say a dot mean. In this case, a dot mean. You get your 20, uh, 27.5. Then, of course, you can also specify, say, you want your mean according to columns. And that's what you get. You can also specify that you want your means according to the rows, and that's what you get. Are we clear? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. mm, there's also another type of average, uh, which in this case, uh, the mean one, you don't do very much, but there's another kind of average you can work out, which you can play around with. There's a function called average. The first one you've looked at is mean. This one is average, but this average thing can be given things to play with. Okay, for example, you can say uh, the information in the first row is more important than the information in the second row. And you can say by how much is important. So you can actually add weights to this information. Since you've got six columns, you can add six weights. Say this this information is more important than the other one, so that as these calculations are being done of average, there is some weighting which is being, which is being uh, what what is which is being uh, which is being applied. Are we clear? Yes. Okay. We'll see how that's done. So in this case, we just we don't we apply for this case for a dot uh, np dot average a we apply the same weighting so every column or whatever it is every number is equally important in this case so a dot average we're treating everything as the same so you see the answer comes out the same for mean and this function average then also for average we just want to do things according to the columns we want to work out the averages according to the columns if you do that that comes out the same then here we want to do things according to the rows if you do that that's what you get so you see that the result is the same However, the difference here is you can also here specify apart from apart from specifying the that you want to do things according to the columns. Okay? Apart from saying you want to do things according to the columns, what have I done? You can specify, and so here, this this we already know. This does things that we can specify what is called the weights here. Now, 
these words, it's a list of numbers, right? There's supposed to be six of them because we've got six columns. Okay? There's supposed to be six of them because we've got six columns. So we are saying uh, the first column, this is a weight. Uh, the second column, this is a weight. It's half of the first one. Half, 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 like that. So basically, if you want to apply weights, then that's how it's done. And this is what you're going to get, like that. Also, the same thing here. If you want to apply the weights, so what you notice here is that average, the function average actually takes weights. You can apply weights to specify how important certain columns are, or whether they're important or they're not important. So you dip the, the size of the weight tells you how important it is. Okay, so you can do weighted, what are called weighted averages in this case here what are called weighted averages by uh, yeah weighted averages yeah here what are called weighted averages so you, if you want to do weighted averages you use this average function but if you don't need to do these weighted averages then you can just use the mean uh function okay are we clear on the difference between uh the mean function and the average function yes it is okay apart from finding averages and means uh you can also work out some statistical things like deviations a standard deviation so you can work out the standard deviation using the function uh, std for standard deviation so np.std so standard deviation then you give it the array whose standard deviation you want to work out so in this case what this function is going to do is it's going to work out an average then it will subtract each value from the average then you square them they need to add them they need to divide as the average standard deviation is supposed to be worked out, they need to give you what the standard deviation is. So in this case, the standard deviation is 17. You can also decide to work out the standard deviations according to the columns. So in that case, you would set the axis to zero to tell it the function that you want standard deviations according to columns, they need to do that. So you work out for each column, what is the standard deviation. If you want your standard deviations according to the rows, you would specify axis to one, they need to also work out what is the standard deviation according to the rows. There is also a method called standard deviation std. So in this case, you say a.std, you do the same thing, 17.16, then a.std axis equals to zero. Then if you run that, this is what you get, then a.std axis equals to one, then that's what you get. Apart from standard deviation, there's something called variance, which measures the spread in the data. So how spread is the data? How close is it? To each other so you can use a function called variance so np dot var a so this one will give you the spread which is this much then np dot uh, var uh, a axis you want the variance according to the columns then that's what you set axis equals to zero then uh, the variance according to the rows then you set your axis equals to one like that okay uh, there is also a method variance var so a dot var a dot var it gives you what the variance is so if you want the variance according to your your what is your columns so you say a dot var then axis equals to zero like that if you want the variance according to your rows you say a dot var then axis equals to that okay so basically yeah that's what we have to do are we clear? Any questions? We have come to the end. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah, uh, let me stop the recording. 
then we finish up on